हेलो फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू द ट्वेंटी सिक्स एपिसोड ऑफ वीडियो सीरीज डी के हल इन दिस एपिसोड वी विल डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट कैश क्रॉप विथ एन ऑब्जेक्टिव टू एन कैश ऑन द अनटैप पोटेंशियल कल्टिवेशन ऑफ सुगर केन इन इंडिया डेट्स बैक टू द वैदिक पीरियड द अर्लीस्ट मैंशन ऑफ सुगर केन कल्टिवेशन इज फाउंड इन इंडियन राइटिंग ऑफ द पीरियड वन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड टू थाउजेंड बी सी we are thankful to all the cane growers that sweetness in our day to day life is only due to their hard work they must also be proud that sugar cane is one of the most efficient photosynthesizers in plant kingdom they are able to convert up to 1% of incident solar energy into biomass by products namely bagas is used as fuel for making compressed fiber board paper plastic while molasses is used in distilleries for the manufacture of alcohol citric acid etc next to textiles sugar industry in india provides gainful employment to a large number of people as per a latest report there are 732 installed sugar factories engaging around 50 million farmers and 0.5 million skilled and unskilled workers in factories it is one of the main crops earning foreign exchange India is world's largest producer and consumer of sugar world's second largest exporter of sugar sugar mill distilleries generate around 18000 crore from sale of ethanol and the average productivity of crop is over 70 tons per hectare by now it is quite evident that sugarcane is an extremely important crop therefore it is relevant to make all possible efforts to increase its production and productivity without increasing the cost of cultivation or say bring it down by adopting improved practices in india sugarcane is cultivated broadly with two distinct agroclimatic regions known as tropical and subtropical regions the tropical regions comprising the states of maharashtra tamil nadu karnataka andhra pradesh gujarat chatisgarh odisha kerala accounts for 42.9% of total area under sugarcane in the country and the average yield is 80 tons per hectare the subtropical region comprises the states of uttar pradesh bihar punjab haryana uttarakhand madhya pradesh rajasthan and accounts for 57.1% of total cane area in the country with an average yield of 60 tons per hectare however depending upon the knowledge and crop management approach the yield may be as high as 180 tons per hectare let us try to understand the major challenges to the crop so that suitable strategies could be devised to increase the yield and quality of canes to the maximum possible extent sugarcane is a long duration crop of 10 to 12 months an average crop of sugarcane yielding 40 tons per acre that is 100 tons per hectare removes 83 kg of nitrogen 21 kg of phosphate 112 kg of potassium 12 kg of sulfur 1.35 kg of iron 500 g of manganese and 250 g of copper from the soil and to meet the requirements the average fertilizers like urea dap and mop that need to be applied per acre of sugarcane crops in different agroclimatic zones are in the northwest zone that is punjab rajasthan haryana uttarakhand and western parts of uttar pradesh it is recommended to apply 110 kg of urea 52 kg of dap and 40 kg of bivet of potassium per acre in the north central zone that is maharashtra madhya pradesh and gujarat it is recommended to apply 100 kg of urea 75 kg of dap and 40 kg of potassium per acre in the northeastern zones that is bihar eastern part of uttar pradesh and assam it recommends 95 kg of urea 60 kg of dap and 40 kg of bivet of potassium per acre in the peninsular zone that is andhra pradesh karnataka kerala and tamil nadu the recommendations are 160 kg of urea 90 kg of dap and 85 kg of bivet of potassium While in the east coast zone, that is Odisha and West Bengal, it recommends 
185 kg of urea, 85 kg DAP, and 40 kg mirrored of potassium. These are all for the plantation crops, while for the ratoon crop, 155 kg of urea, 50 kg of DAP, and 40 kg of mirrored of potassium is recommended per acre. Other recommendations are organic manure 6 to 10 tons per acre before planting, or green manuring with sun hemp is suggested. In addition, 16 to 24 kg of sulfur or 200 kg gypsum, 8 kg of ferrous sulfate, 4 kg of magnus sulfate, 4 kg of zinc sulfate, 2 kg of copper sulfate, and 2 kg of borax may be applied basally in planting furrows. These are the recommendations based on various research findings throughout the country. Now we need to check to what extent fertilizers are applied in excess of recommendation and what all is being applied currently because balanced nutrition is the basic requirement for a good crop harvest. Kindly assess them carefully. The next is measured diseases. I mean the diseases, red rot is the most devastating disease of sugarcane, also known as cancer of sugarcane and causes huge yield loss of up to 30%. The next measured disease is wilt. It has been reported that yield loss may be up to 10 tons per hectare in plant crops, while in retoon it may be as high as 65%. Another disease affecting sugarcane is a smut. The affected plants are severely stunted and yield losses may have a range of 12 to 75%. In recent years, Pokha boeing has emerged as a new challenge to the sugarcane cultivation. And in case of severe infection, it reduces the quality up to 65%. In the peninsular regions of India, that is Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Gujarat, and Maharashtra, rust is another disease that damages the crop. Nematodes are also an emerging challenge in sugarcane cultivation. In India, Nematodes are reported to cause about 10 to 40 percent yield losses in sugarcane. Symptoms are often confusing with nutrient deficiencies, even in the presence of optimum moisture and nutrients. Sugarcane, being a long duration crop, is affected by more than 200 insect pests. However, some major insect pests, including borers, are root borer, early shoot borer, top shoot borer, stock borer, internal borer, pink borer, and plasti borer. Other insects are termites, white club, scale insects, millibug, white woolly aphids, pyrilla, etc. By now, you must have assessed the nutrient status, common diseases prevalent in your area, and also the insect, major insect challenges affecting the crop in your region. Now it is time to discuss the improved practices so that new heights can be achieved in sugarcane cultivation. Now to improve the soil and yield of crops, we need to adopt certain soil and nutrient management field tested measures. In case fertilizers are applied beyond the recommended quantities, it could be easily brought down to the maximum quantity recommended. Ensure balanced nutrition. In case of nutrient deficiency, sugarcane yield may decrease by 35 or even 50%. Sugarcane being a long duration crop, it is suggested to apply good quality humicacy at the rate of 1 liter per acre twice during the crop cycle. Apply biofertilizers like Acetobacter, Azotobacter, PSB, KMB and ZSB at the rate of 0.5 to 1 liter per acre and all these inputs are to be applied in the soil. As per our field experience, Application of biofertilizers in sugarcane in the states of Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, and Maharashtra resulted into healthy growth and more number of tillers. Increase in thickness of canes. Increase in cane yield by 15 to 20 percent in the very first year. Increase in cane juice recovery by 2 to 2.5 percent. Less attack of diseases and pests. 25% to 33% savings in nitrogenous fertilizers. Improvement in soil health with increase in organic carbon, available nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and improvement in pH of soil. The next practice is water management. Under the conventional system, about 250 tons of water is needed 
to produce one ton of sugarcane and to meet the requirements, 30 to 40 irrigations are applied in the tropical areas. Adoption of improved methods like alternate furrow irrigation, drip irrigation, and trash mulching could minimize the water demand to a great extent. Crops need to be protected against the diseases. Do you know that the diseases like red rot, wilt, and smut are caused primarily through disease set and spread through soil, while the secondary transmission is through air, rain, etc. Whereas diseases like pokaboy and rust are airborne. Set treatment with Pseudomonas species has been reported to reduce red rot disease severity by up to 60%, while soil application of Trichoderma or GNM effectively controls wilt and smut diseases. In addition, application of Trichoderma or GNM also increase in germination, number of tillers, cane length, and average cane weight. Trichoderma hargeanum has also been found to be very effective against pokhaboy and gives up to 74% of control. Combination of pseudomonas and bacillus extends effective control against secondary infection and other airborne diseases in sugarcane. As regards nematodes, soil application of biocontrol agents like pochonia or bacillomyces at the time of planting helps in suppression the plant parasitic nematodes. And intercropping with sun hemp or marigold or dhancha helps to minimize the losses by nematodes to a great extent. The next important segment is insect management. Before we discuss pest specific control measures, it is strongly suggested to avoid excess application of nitrogenous fertilizers. Adopt intercropping as it helps to minimize insect infestation. To effectively control the borers, it is suggested to use pheromone traps at the rate of 5 to 10 traps per acre and trichocards at the rate of 20,000 per acre. This recorded the highest cane yield of over 96 tons per hectare, while the sucrose content has been found to be over 20%. Here it is important to mention that adding trico cards with pheromone traps added a yield of 7 tons per hectare and more than 0.5% sucrose content in Andhra Pradesh state of India. In addition, application of Viveria basiana and Bacillus thuringiensis variety Crustaki with 50% of conventional pesticide not only add value to insect control but also increase the yield of canes. Ceremon traps and trichocards should be used at 30 days after planting and trichocards should be used six times at 10 days interval, while Viveria basiana and BTK should be applied to foliar measures as soon as the insect infestation is seen. Biocontrol agents like metrizium anisopli, verticillium lichani, and Viveria basiana have been reported to effectively control white woolly aphid, scale insects, and other sucking pests. Application of metrizum anisopli in soil at planting was found to be effective compared to conventional chemicals against white grub of sugarcane. Use of light traps and EPN, that is entomopathogenic nematodes, with metrizum anisopli also helps to control adult white grubs. Ensure balanced nutrition and avoid excess application of nitrogenous fertilizers. Adopt intercropping as it helps in nutrition, disease management, and insect control. In new plantations, all the necessary inputs, whatever needed to be applied in soil at the time of final land preparation or immediately before planting. Second doses, if needed to be applied after five to six months of planting. In case of return crop, soil input to be applied immediately after harvesting of previous crop. Foliar application to be done as soon as the disease or insect infestation has begun. We hope by adopting these improved practices, there will be a yield increase of up to 20% of healthy gains. 
improvement in cane juice recovery and increase in sucrose content with a saving of 15 to 20 percent in the cost of cultivation. Thanks, like the video and subscribe the channel, share with friends and give feedback so that we can include new topics for further discussions.